Hi there. Today we're going to set up a level 90 warrior cross hotbar for players who play with controller on PC or console. You do not have to be level 90 to set this up if you want to get a jump start on having a consistent cross hotbar. A few guidelines. We'll only have to set this up once and will work for any content level you play. You'll never have to adjust for syncing purposes. These are my personal setups and you're free to use or change what you need that fits you. I am using a double stacked cross hotbar as it's the most effective in my personal opinion and that video will be linked down below. Lastly, I will build these with the mindset of having the most important abilities with low cooldowns on the bottom cross hotbar for ease of access. I separate these into four sections in my head, right trigger one, right trigger two, left trigger one, and left trigger two. Right trigger one is for GCD, damage dealing, and abilities. Right trigger two is for damage mitigation and job abilities. Left trigger one is for AOE, GCD combos, and job abilities. And left trigger two is for job abilities and extra. Using the setup, let's build out our cross hop bars one section at a time. Right trigger one is always our main GCD combos. For Warrior, this is our main GCD combo, Heavy Swing, Maim, and Storm's Path. We also have our variation GCD here that gives us our 10% damage boost, Storm's Eye. I like to keep these all together so I do not forget to reapply the Storm's Eye buff when it runs out. For our right trigger one D-pad, like our other tanks, we have all of our weavable OGCDs and our very important Fell Cleave ability. This is originally Inner Beast, then upgraded to Fell Cleave, and then further upgraded to Inner Chaos under certain conditions. This is the bread and butter of our warrior. All of the warrior's OGCDs that I put right here are very closely related other than upheaval, which is just a off global cooldown damage attack to throw in when it's ready. Infuriate and inner release are directly related to fell cleave, which is why I have them right next to the button to not lose track of them during battle. Right trigger two is our cross hop bar for damage mitigations and job abilities. I always keep a ramper and reprisal in the same position for all tanks, as well as the special ability each tank has at the 120 second cooldown, which which for warrior is vengeance which reduces damage by 30 percent and damages enemies that physically damage you make sure to use this often for those extra ticks of dps although tiny we also have our gap closer here like the other tanks as since you are a melee you do not want to get caught away from the boss to keep that damage up time Right trigger 2 d-pad is our interject invulnerability and range aggro. These are the same setup as my other takes with one flex spot here if you want something in that blank spot. I kind of find it awkward to reach certain buttons and that is one of them. So that spot is usually empty or a flex spot for me. Left trigger 1 is always our AoE GCD combos. I generally like to keep AoE to the left trigger and single target to the right trigger if at all possible for all my jobs, tanks, healer, or TPS. We have our two AoE GCDs. We have Overpower and Mithril Tempest with our technically third GCD Decimate when we achieve our job gauge. Initially, this is still Cyclone that turns into Decimate, which later turns into Chaotic Cyclone under certain conditions. These abilities revert back to their low levels when in low level dungeon, so you don't have to worry about moving them. I also have Primal Rend here as we will get this around every 60 seconds and is a very important big Unga Bunga ability so you do not want to put it on the second cross hotbar for fear of missing out during rotation if things go sideways during a pool. Left Trigger D-Pad is our all important healing toolkit for Warrior. I keep these as a left trigger d-pad because they are very easy to access and mostly need them for trash mobs or AoE, so it makes it easier to weave in from my AoE rotation. I do set these up specifically in this order for just my own eyes as I like to use blood wetting or low level raw intuition ability first after my ramper and reprisal are going to wear off. There are so many different combos of healing abilities that you can use and really is situational. If you notice, I keep all of my own self heals here on the d-pad as nascent flash is for putting on a party member which is on the left trigger 2. This shares a recast timer with blood wetting. Lastly our left trigger 2 is our job abilities and roll abilities like provoke which is at the same spot for every one of my tanks while all other three are flex spots. For warrior this is orogeny and nascent flash. I keep nascent flash up here as I rarely use it on team members unless we are really in a tight spot and the healer needs help. But most of the time I let the healer do its job and expect DPS to do theirs as well and stay out of AoEs. Our left trigger d-pad is the same for every tank which is arm length, limit break, low blow, and our tank stance. These are more because they're situational or I don't want to accidentally press them like tank stance and limit break which is why they're over there in the corner. 
If you're wondering where my sprint and other utility abilities are, then you will find them on a cross hotbar three, which is shared between all jobs. My double stacked cross hotbar video will show you how to set that all up. I do not put utility abilities on my double stack cross hotbar because cross hotbar one and two for me should only be abilities that I'm using in battle or pertinent to that job specifically. Yes, I do have some open slots to put these, but for me, if I can't do it on every single job, then I won't do it on any of them because not all of them have the fortunate enough situation to have empty slots like a paladin, which uses all cross hotbars and you still aren't able to put every ability on. Shirk also does not make it on the hotbar as I never had needed it for casual content, alliance raids, or even eight man raids. This really only ever plays a part in savage content, extreme content, unreals, or ultimate. So if you're not doing that high end content, you don't really need to worry about it. Now, this is a series that I'm starting, and if you like it, then please hit that like button so I know that it's been helpful. Now, we have our full setup for our level 90 warrior. Again, these are so highly personal and dependent on your play style, but I generally find most people like my cross hotbar setups as it's more based on objective understanding of the job. Keep important low cooldown things on the bottom, not as important long cooldowns on top. And this will generally work for almost every piece of content in the game other than Savage. Hopefully I can bring a little organization to the chaos that is cross hotbars. If you got any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break through that subscribe button down below. If you want to see my other Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.